This is Twit. Microsoft <laughs> launched a bunch of, uh, it did the fall feature drop for Copilot. So Copilot is its AI assistant. It did 12 things. Uh, it introduced 12 things. But of course, the most interesting is this new AI avatar, Myco, Miko. Maybe we can debate how to pronounce it because I only knew it existed for two hours. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't know if it's the new Clippy. It's I think it's pretty cute. What do you think? It is very cute. I don't know if you've seen... Um... Oh, goodness. Was it in Howl's Moving Castle? I think that's the one it's from. There's a little uh, fire creature whose Calcifer. name is Calcifer. And definitely reminding me a little bit of Calcifer, this sort of uh, yeah. glowing ember creature that has a smiley face that I want to hug. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I had kind of a macro thought about it on the train as I was coming into New York. I was like, so Clippy, Clippy was a paperclip, like a very tangible item. And I feel like tech back then was very tangible like hardware you knew what the technology was now this Miko miko guy is kind of like a blob with yeah. undefined undefined em- edges and i'm like oh, that's kind of how i feel about ai <laughs> like interesting yeah, yeah that's yeah that's an interesting way to kind of uh, think about it where it even like the loss of skeuomorphism right has its own level of of sort of making this digital space ever changing but then you yeah you layer on this sort of aura uh kind of thing and it does feel a little bit a little blobby. bit blobby yeah, it is. It's blob, and it, it's that's like the tech is sort of blobby. It's a little bit spaghetti project at times. It's a little mm-hmm. bit, uh, you know, peanut butter all over the sandwich. Um, I'm not going to keep going with the metaphors. There are plenty. I, I guess I'm kind of curious. Well, because we should come back to. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Miko because uh, it's like. It it just it right. rings for me, uh, and then it's not as close to my name, which makes me feel weird. So I'm glad that it's Miko and not. Wait, Miko. actually, quickly, uh, we could we can dissect the name. So it's a combination of Microsoft and Copilot. Oh, crud. so maybe maybe Miko. Oh no, it <laughs> is actually Miko. Yeah. Oh darn it. Well, yeah. The the little little friend. <laughs> um. What what? Because w- w- I want to talk a little bit more about it and where it pops up, but. Can you tell us about the other upgrades that are rolling out? Like what mm-hmm. can, because this is one of the things about specific to Microsoft. We know that it relies a lot on the technology that it sort of leases from open AI. Mm-hmm. And so when it's announcing new features and upgrades, it can be kind of difficult to see them as truly new features or upgrades because OpenAI will have announced something before this. What is new with Copilot? And maybe the better question is, since there are so many of them, which stand out to you outside of Myco? The one I liked the most, uh, actually more than Myco, I'm just laughing at that name now, <laughs> is uh, one called Groups. And so, it, you know, group projects are just the worst, especially the worst. the worst. And it's just a total mess. Um, so basically this feature, you can invite up to 32 people to kind of like a co-pilot project and you're all talking and collaborating in the same space. And then co-pilot AI is taking notes, documenting next steps, kind of like nudging you along. <gasps> so it's kind of leading the group project, which I think is pretty I... cool. And what's great about that is then you are not responsible for being the naggy person. Right. The note taker. It's not me. I'm not the one mm-hmm. that's telling you you need to keep doing this and that you mm-hmm. need to be held accountable. I wish right. I, there's a there's a group project coming up uh, <laughs> that I'm working on right now, and I am having to be the naggy person, and it's not fun. So if I could have uh, you know this this thing sort of tallying votes as it's as you show here proposing options and making sure everybody knows what there's that would be so nice right i think it would reduce that friction because i i have a feeling game recognized game here um we were the people in the group project who weren't fans of group projects because we ended up wanting to take on most of the work just to make sure it was actually done and done correctly (laughs) i feel seen and embarrassed (laughs) <laughs> retroactively for my like high school college self yeah. yes uh, I, yeah. I, I remember working I, I had like an uh, an all-nighter and then some 
on a group project because I said, no, 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 I'll just do the video part. Y'all don't need to be a part of this. It's so right. much hard, so much work trying to get everybody together. So that's really cool. Um, I think so, but there might be an, an even more annoying aspect where maybe the, the you and me on the project would be like, well, co-pilot says we talked about this. So, you know, we only completed yeah, I've got receipts. Four, right, four of 10 of co-pilot's action items. And you did say we should do that because it's in the co-pilot notes. So <laughs> it could stir the pot. Oh, that's funny. Now, th that makes me think, though, because it says uh, friends, classmates, co-workers. I can definitely see this very easily with co-workers. Um, perhaps you have more awareness of this. When I think of college campuses, for some reason I wanted to say like campus or something, <laughs> multiple campi. Uh, when I think of college campuses, I'm seeing the Apple logo everywhere. Uh, do you think this is something that we'll f probably see more in the, the, you know, the, the professional workplace where people have Microsoft and are using Microsoft Teams and that kind of thing. Yeah, you know, I, I think on a larger note, Microsoft actually has a big problem. It's totally losing the younger generations to the, the Google suite, to Apple products. And so this is a smart feature where maybe, just maybe it could get people to kind of use its products, the, the younger folks, because, I mean, they have so many corporate contracts, which is great. People are using it all over in workplaces, but those young people are growing up, they're starting uh, startups, you know, they're moving into the working world and they're not going to use Microsoft unless forced, you know, because they just grew up somewhere else. So actually one other thing Microsoft launched today was uh, more integrations with the Google suite oh. to Copilot. So you can- That's clever. Copilot can look through your Gmail, look through your docs, you know, of course there's data privacy issues it talked about, but you can kind of bring in your Google stuff. So I think Microsoft was kind of, you know, let's let's be open to the enemy, bring them in. So I did that today. That makes sense. Um, now, other than that, I see that the company has said, you know what you need is a little buddy to talk to about your health. So interesting. Health advice from, Cl not from Clippy from Copilot. What is the what is the deal there and more importantly how is Microsoft handling what I think is easy to imagine uh, the response is at first which is should we really be talking to chatbots about yeah. our health? It didn't say I think it might be too controversial controversial so this announcement is very much a buffet of AI and they only <laughs> gave us a couple sentences about each. They elaborated a little more on the new Clippy. Everyone's going to think it's Clippy, but the Myco. They elaborated on Myco, the group project thing. That was really tangible. But when it came to things like health and education, they just said it will answer questions about your health. It will help you find doctors. That's all it said. It didn't get into, you know, it will abide by HIPAA. And, you know, it's a full-fledged XYZ medical professional. So the... It seemed like a limited vision there. Yeah, that's interesting. I I wonder if if we'll see it in the same way that we saw Microsoft rolling out that technology that would let you sort of rewind throughout your day, and then it got blasted, and then the company kind of had to work on it for for a lot longer to make people feel a little bit more comfortable with it. Um, now, Myco being the co-pilot uh, mascot. Where do we know where Myco is going to show up? Is it is it like Clippy in that sense of I'm working on a document and it sees me struggling and it pops in to say, hey, I can help you with that. Where or is this just kind of like a, a mascot of now, you know, it's got Microsoft's AI built into it. It's an, a, a voice assistant, so it's going to pop up. You're going to be able to talk to it. You can make it go away if you want. It also sounds like a combo clippy and a mood ring because its color will change based on the conversation. So I guess if you're mad, it'll turn red or something. <laughs> I don't know. This was silly. What are we even talking about? You know, but yeah. <laughs> uh, it's true. It's what they wrote. And they're going to have different conversation styles where maybe you know, like chat GPT. Some people like it to be more encouraging. Some people like it to be super dry and straightforward, just the facts. So 
Maiko is going to have different modes. Oh, look at Maiko right there. You have it playing. Oh, hey. It's moving. And there's the real talk. Yeah, that's I now I see that that feature real talk. Right. Real talk is kind of like your home girl, your companion, like real talk. You're going to talk about personal subjects and it's going to boost you up and um yeah, it's so funny. It's like, I you know what? I hmm, I can't wait to meet the people who are like in the, in the outside world using this feature because there are some times where you hear about a feature being introduced and it just feels like someone in a room pitching an idea and saying you know what would be really cool is if we did this and i it's odd because microsoft is the telemetry company right like this is the company known for paying attention to what its users do, how they do it, what they like, what they don't like, where they click, where they don't click. Uh, me, me, no, I'm not going to say that because it's not true. I was going to say where their eyes look and where they don't look. That's that's not the case. But um, given that, does that... I always look at these different features and I go, does Microsoft know something I don't? Because I just don't see someone really wanting to have a real talk conversation with a with a little um with a little microsoft um you know <laughs> mascot that's the thing because we've seen it with open ai uh you know people are talking to their chatbots so it's possible but i don't know it hasn't Maybe. caught on no i mean voice tech i i really feel is probably one of the biggest failures of the tech industry voice assistants they are not fun to talk to. It's weird to talk out loud mm -hmm. to a piece of technology. They put a smiley face on it. Great. But it is still so much better to talk to a person than a computer. I mean, they're better at natural language processing, but it's it's awkward. It's just very awkward. Adding something cute is nice, but just the voice component alone, I think, would limit the, the relationship, if you can call it, with <laughs> Myco. Yeah, I agree. I agree 100%. There's a Anthony, what was the if you can remember the name of that thing where you were able to talk out loud and it was talking back um pretty pretty quickly and you mentioned it and then I ended up trying it later that day and I s said there were times where I felt rushed. If if Anthony can think of it then he'll chime in but um regardless this was a sort of system where it was supposed to be natural language and I remember talking to it and feeling like oh, if I don't keep talking, it's going to cut in. And so now I'm trying to think of what I'm going to say next. And there's a lot of pressure here. Mm. And th that's not how it works for the most part with humans, right. unless, you know, you're talking to uh, a fellow person with ADHD and you can see- I had a good one. Well. I oh. had an aha moment where I was like, maybe it's getting somewhere. Let me look at my phone. It was a, I think it was a Google Gemini voice mm. assistant. It was on my phone and I was talking and it was talking back and I was kind of like, wow, that's, the most realistic I've ever felt talking to a piece of technology. So I was thinking that it, it could be going somewhere. Um, I still don't like to talk out loud. I, maybe it's just my preference. You know, if I'm in the car, I don't really like it. I do. I certainly do not want to talk to Alexa. Like we're watching <sighs> TV together or something. Um, yeah. Yeah. But people do like talking to ChatGPT and develop what they feel are very personal relationships, almost like therapist, friend, lover, coworker. So the mm. written form is strong, but voice tech is just not, I don't think it's clicking for most people. Uh, yeah. At least not yet, but not uh, yet. We'll, we'll have to see how that goes. Is there anything else uh, that bears mentioning here with the new updates, upgrades, uh, changes to Copilot uh, for Microsoft? I think there's just so many things. So there were 12 things. And if you it's getting deep in the weeds to the point of if if you are a co-pilot user, like go check out the article and see all the new stuff. Uh, that's that's probably my advice at this point. It's just too much. Just the buffet. You got to go pick. You want the pot roast. You want the mashed potatoes. That's <laughs> that's up to you. I, I can't choose for you. You enjoying this tiny taste of Tech News Weekly? I'm happy to hear it. You can check out the full show on our website, twit.tv slash TNW, or you can watch it right here on YouTube. Just click the link below.